Andrew Thomas, right away from the jump in his time at Georgia, was clearly a special player. He started game one at right tackle and manned that spot all the way throughout the 2017 season, which saw Georgia come a few plays away from winning a national title. Then he seamlessly transitioned to the left side starting his sophomore year and went on to become one of the best offensive tackles in college football before recently being taken with a fourth overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft by the New York Giants. Replacing Thomas isn't going to be easy, and while there are a few guys on the team that seem poised to do so, it's speculation right now to expect who might fill those massive shoes, let alone play up to the standard that he had set. But there are a couple guys in the 2020 recruiting class who can follow in Thomas's footsteps, starting right away as a freshman and then growing into bigger and better players over the course of their careers. Now, it's important when discussing some of these guys that we pay attention to starting right away as freshmen to follow the Thomas model, because that's truly what makes Thomas unique. And while Kendall Milton and Mikhail Sherman certainly figure to be good players and great leaders for the Georgia program, they have a handful of guys in front of them on the depth chart that's going to make things a little bit tougher for them to see the field right away. As far as on the offensive line, expecting Broderick Jones to be Andrew Thomas 2.0 is pretty unfair, especially as Kirby Smart put it back on National Signing Day. Well, it was a lot more important a year ago to sign Xavier Trust. It was a lot more important a year ago to sign Warren McClendon because when you have Andrew Thomas and Isaiah, and Isaiah Wilson, you, you understand there's an opportunity for these guys to leave. Um, I, I'm not a big believer that the next guy's just going to walk in and play for Andrew Thomas and Isaiah Wilson. You have to plan things a year out. So really we're looking at this saying, okay, these guys are going to have to be ready to play possibly next year, but really the next year. And the same thing at defensive back. You know, we got a lot of defensive backs coming back this season. We've got a lot of them. There's some good football players. But we're a year away from what could look like the O-line because we have some potential guys that come out. So what are you doing to develop the ones you're signing now is more my concern. You know, it'd be foolish for me to sit here and think that two of these tackles we just signed are going to walk in here and play. You guys will print that, but I'm also realist that that's probably not going to happen. Based on the history of the SEC, you do the study how many freshman offensive tackles I played. That's, that's tough to find. You know what I mean? It's hard to do. Now, if they're the athletic and they're the best guys or we have injuries, those guys will provide us great depth. And I certainly think a lot of these guys we just signed are talented enough to come in and help us. But they're, they're not mid-year guys, and uh, they'll have to come in and compete for it. Now, in a normal year where Jones is able to come in in June, enter the Georgia Strength and Conditioning Program, and put on the weight he needs to to make an impact right away at Georgia, maybe there's a chance he can step in and replace Andrew Thomas or Isaiah Wilson at the tackle spots as a freshman. But given the uncertainty with the situation and when Jones might be able to get on campus now, along with every other incoming freshman, I really don't know about the chances of him playing early and making that day one impact like Thomas did. But there's another offensive lineman to pay attention to, and that's Cedric Von Prong Granger. He comes from New Orleans out of a very strong Warren Easton program, much like how Thomas came from Atlanta at a very good Pace Academy program. What might be blocking Van Prong Granger, though, is the fact that Trey Hill is back at center for the Bulldogs. If this were last year and Von Pond Granger were running the program, I think he'd have a great shot at being the starting center. But given that Hill is already such an established name there, I could certainly see him holding off Van Pond Granger for another year before Hill possibly kicks out to guard in the coming year, thus clearing the way for Von Pond Granger as a sophomore. But again, as a freshman, especially given he's not going to be able to get to campus anytime soon, I don't necessarily think his odds are all that great. There's one really position that Georgia needs to get immediate contributions from incoming freshmen at. It's the wide receiver spot. That's why they went out and signed five wide receivers. And I actually think the guy that has the best chance to follow in Thomas's footsteps is Marcus Roseme. Roseme played for one of the best high school programs, not just in the state of Florida, but in the country, starring for St. Thomas Aquinas last season. They went undefeated, winning the Florida State title, and Roseme's a big reason why. He might not have the athletic upside that, say, a Jermaine Burton or an Arian Smith does in terms of their long-term potential, but right now, day one, I think he's the best chance to be an immediate contributor for the Georgia team at that wide receiver spot. Seeing him down in Orlando, it's clear he's already got the intricacies of route running and the ability to win physical contested one-on-one -on -one battles against some of the best athletes in the country in his tool belt. He'll need to be able to do that at an SEC level, but I think given that what we've seen him playing at one of the best high schools in the country and then backing that up at the Under Armour All-American game in Orlando, I do think there's a good chance that Rosemey can be an immediate contributor for Georgia. He doesn't need to be the star, much like Georgia didn't need Thomas to be the star on the offensive line that first year, as they had Isaiah win. Georgia's wide receiver room has George Pickens, who is expected to be one of the best receivers in the country, and possibly even the best receiver to ever play for Kirby Smart. But Rosemey does certainly have a role to fill, and if he can be an emerging outside wide receiver target for quarterback Jamie Newman or whoever ends up playing the position for Georgia this year, 
I think there's a really good chance that you see his name and see him becoming an immediate impact player for Georgia. He might not be a star or superstar right away, but he's going to be a guy whose name gets called quite often early in the season. And given that Todd Munkin figures to be opening up the offense, I think he's going to have a chance to earn some catches and some playing time, especially as Georgia's going to need someone to take some of the pressure off of George Pickens. Like Thomas Roseman, he comes from one of the best programs in the country, and he's already sort of a finished product by the time he gets to Georgia. Obviously, there are things that he can improve upon, but like Thomas, when he got to the NFL level, a lot of people were marked about how high his floor was. He was sort of thought of it the same way when he first got to Georgia, and I think ultimately that's the way we're going to look at Roseman. He might not have the highest ceiling or be the most spectacular player in this class, but in terms of being ready to contribute from day one, I don't think there's a better player position to do that than Marcus Roseman. Now, I'm not saying Marcus Roseme is going to be a duplicate of Andrew Thomas. I'm not saying he's going to become one of the best wide receivers in college football, nor is he going to be the first player taking his position whenever it comes time for the NFL draft. We're still not even really totally sure if he goes on to become the best player at his position in his class, given Burton, Smith, Justin Robinson, and Ladd McConkey all have solid upside. But that was the same sort of thinking about Thomas when he got here, given that Georgia also brought in Isaiah Wilson. And while Wilson still has some of those immense upside traits you look for, there's a reason Thomas went on to have the career that he did and become the first player taken at his position. This year, Georgia's probably going to call on Marcus Rosemey to make a play, much like Georgia asked Andrew Thomas to make a number of key blocks during the 2017 season. They didn't ask him to be a star, but they asked him to be a good player right away, and that's what he ended up being. And I think that's what Marcus Rosemey is going to be for Georgia this coming season. For Dog Nation, I'm Connor Riley. For more Dog Nation videos, check out youtube.com slash dognation.